Now, let me start just real simple. For many Americans, this was Mueller week, a special counsel speaking for the first and only time in his role. But Trump Attorney General Bill Barr is clearly pushing ahead to make it something else, to make it sort of Barr week. And he's got this new interview that actually, and this is kind of interesting, it may help Democrats because it doesn't exactly rebut critics who say Mr. Barr acts more like Donald Trump's personal criminal defense attorney than the Attorney General of the United States. And Barr also knows what he's doing, so he's got news. He dishes some little tidbits of news of his own here, recounting even when he first got the letter of rebuke from Mueller for, according to Mueller, not capturing the scope of the report of confusing the public. And Barr uses dramatic language today to dismiss concerns about his own reputation, and then he goes ahead and basically defies Mueller. The special counsel was a little sharper on obstruction. I was just trying to state the bottom line, and the bottom line was that Bob Mueller identified some episodes. He, he did not reach a conclusion. He wasn't exonerating the president, but he wasn't finding a crime either. Rod Rosenstein and I felt it was necessary for us, uh, as the heads of, uh, of the department, to reach that decision. Many of the instances would not amount to obstruction. Many of the instances would not amount to obstruction. Now, in fairness, the Mueller report itself does not state in its treatment of the evidence that every instance discussed was amounting to obstruction. So I want to be clear there. Barr is doing a lot of things that look a little bit embarrassing to him, but that doesn't mean that everything he says has no legal basis. So what's wrong here with this picture? Well, the Mueller report does state that its whole point and purpose was to provide the evidence to enable Congress to make a decision, not have Barr summarize it or resummarize it or mischaracterize it, or rule on it. And that is something that Barr again deflects on here. My purpose there was not to summarize every jot and tittle of the report and every, uh, you know, uh, angle that, that, that Mueller looked into, but uh, just state the bottom line, which I did in the four-page memo. I said that uh, Mueller uh, did not reach a decision. He, he gave both sides. Well, again, I wasn't trying to provide all the flavor and nooks and crannies of the, of the report. Rod Rosenstein and I uh, reached a decision, and the criteria we applied in finding no obstruction. The fact is, we already know Bob Mueller thought the summary wasn't just inadequate or incomplete, but as he thought about his old colleague, you see here in some file footage, he thought this man, who he used to work with, who he clearly respected, fundamentally lost the thread. And that's why he immediately committed his objections in writing, telling Mr. Barr the summary didn't capture the context, the nature, the substance of Mueller's work and its conclusions. And that was sowing public confusion. Now I can tell you for the first time, Barr is actually recounting his side of receiving that unusual letter of rebuke from a man who, again, I want to say this respectfully, but I think accurately, a man who, at this juncture, has far more public credibility than Mr. Barr. Now Mueller and Barr share that long history, and Barr reflected on that as well while talking about this letter he got from Mueller. He wrote the letter. Uh, taking issue, saying that they're ca you'd caused confusion. Mm -hmm. Did that catch you off guard? Yeah, sure. I, I was surprised he just didn't pick up the phone and call me, given our 30-year relationship. But why didn't he? I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Well, maybe our guests know. Jason Johnson, politics editor for theroot.com. Paul Butler, a former federal prosecutor, and Sophia Nelson, counsel of the GOP House Oversight Committee. Good evening to each of you. Good evening, Ari. Hey. Uh, Paul. Mr. Barr would have us believe that he doesn't understand why lawyers sometimes do things in writing rather than pick up the phone super cash when you're old buddies. Um, can you help him and, and, and the rest of us understand? You do it to preserve a record. You do it because you don't trust the guy you're writing the letter to. There's no reason why Mueller should have trusted Barr. Barr mischaracterized the report that Robert Mueller had spent two years working on, which is about our national security. So just fact-checking that point, when, yeah. he, when he says something that I think could sound reasonable to people, right, if, if I knew someone for a very long time and I said, oh, well, they didn't just call me, in casual parlance, that's a reasonable sounding thing to say. You're, you're saying that he is trying to sound reasonable while hiding the fact that this really was a blow up between them that was bad enough to be in writing. 
Yeah, what Bill Barr did when he had that fake press conference where he mischaracterized the Mueller report is put the interest of Donald Trump ahead of the interest of the United States. So there's absolutely no reason why Mueller should have had any confidence in him. Mm. Sophia? Yeah, I mean, he's exactly right. At the end of the day, uh, Attorney General Barr is really, I think, damaging himself. And I don't want to get too far ahead of you, but his comments in the interview this morning were just unbelievable about, you know, people dying and reputations be damned. He really doesn't care. So I think that uh, Paul's dead on that at the end of the day, we lawyers like to have these things called present sense impressions. And we like to get things down on paper because we want to preserve a record that we did disagree. And clearly, uh, Mueller felt that he could not trust Barr to pick up the phone and say, hey, you got to go back out and correct yourself because he didn't get it right the first time. And you're talking about what he says everybody dies because uh, you're familiar, of course, with the new source material. Um, let's hear that. Go ahead. Everyone dies, and I'm not, you know, uh, you know, I, I, I don't believe in the Homeric idea that, you know, immortality comes by, you know, having odes sung about you over the centuries, you know. Now, Sophia, based on what I know, and it is Friday of a long week, but my understanding is everyone does die. Yep. So that is true. That's real. That's uh, true. That it's real. That's very real. <laughs> so real, sometimes people don't even want to think about uh, our own uh, impending death. We are all just sure. packages of cells that will eventually expire. But, but you're saying that he's doing something wrong there. What is wrong with him saying that? But there's something else about this package. It has a soul. And my problem is the soul of the Republican Party has been lost. The soul of this attorney general has been lost. Because at the end of the day, this is about the Constitution of the United States of America. And Robert Mueller and his team spent two years and $35 million in tax taxpayer dollars. And two guys, Rosenstein and Barr, decided to overturn it and make a different analysis than the men and women tasked to do it for two years who, by the way, were following the DOJ uh, OLC analysis, as you know. So they were actually following DOJ guidelines for Barr to say otherwise is disingenuous. And I do fear that he is uh, like the Grim Reaper here in this interview, like, I'm going to die, so reputation be damned. Uh, doesn't he have children and grandchildren? Doesn't he want people to think well of him when he leaves this earth? Yeah, I know I, I mean, do. Uh, you I, know. I'm really torn. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be very <laughs> honest uh, here, as, as, and I love what you're saying about the soul, uh, but, but as I kick it out to Jason, you know, I'm going to be honest. It's one of those things where it depends who says it. Right. Because if the most enlightened person you know did say it in the right context, you know, your honorable grandfather, um, your really humble yoga teacher, everyone dies. Yeah, let, let's take that in. Uh, but he's saying it as a, as a rebuttal to the fact that people, including, we've had them on, on this program and others, people who worked with him, who respected him, who thought he was better than this, are aghast at his performance. So it's not about whether or not you die, it's about whether your reputation, your professional work, the oath you take to the office matters, Jason. Well, it, 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 again, all right, what Barr is basically saying is, I don't care what anyone thinks because I'm working for Trump. Many men wish death on me. I don't care, right? I'm going to be here. I'm going to do what Trump wants me to do. And at the end of the day, I think history will reflect well on me. But, but this is the other thing that I think <laughs> is really, the end really of that telling. 50 cents, the end of that 50 cent line is I'm going to be who I'm destined to be. Exactly. And, and he, that's what Barr knows. He knows that at the end of the day, if this administration continues, that he will be, he's going to be the hand of the president. He's going to continue to do this kind of work. Remember, next summer, you've already heard the president say that he wants Barr to possibly be the point man on investigating uh, uh, Joe Biden or investigating Hillary right. Clinton. So he's thinking of the long game. He that doesn't care be about a, what's happening now. That it's going to be a surgical summer, as it were. Right. <laughs> exactly. Paul? Yeah, you know, some of this is with regard to Mueller, him not being as direct as he could be on these issues. So, mm. you know, Ari, you and I are big hip hop heads. The thing I love about that culture is it's direct. It's in your face. Sure. That's not how Robert Mueller flows. And so when I might say Trump is a thug and the attorney general is a liar, what Mueller says is, well, I didn't have enough evidence to charge. Well, actually, he didn't even say he didn't have enough evidence right. uh, to charge Trump with a crime. What he said is Bill Barr and the Department of Justice won't let me charge Trump with a crime. But if I thought that he was innocent, I would tell you that. And I'm not telling you that. And what he says about the attorney general, Mueller writes that letter where he says, well, you didn't exactly capture the substance and context of my 400-page uh, memo, again, that's calling 
bar a liar just right. not saying it right. as but doing it in as those, a hip-hop head would. Right, in those careful, those careful ways, which, again, is what makes him a good prosecutor and the kind of person you would trust to navigate difficult issues without fear or favor and prejudice. Um, but we are out here in the post-report period, the 68 right. days between the report being turned in and him speaking in public and what that did. And, and then the question, Sophia, you worked uh, as a counsel to the Congress in a committee and the question mm -hmm. of how the Congress is struggling with that. And that's where, again, I mean, we're just calling it as we see it. There are Democrats who very clearly seem to be struggling with how to talk about this, even the ones who say they're for an impeachment probe. Right. Take a look. We need to change public opinion. The Judiciary Committee should begin impeachment inquiries. Inquiries, all right? Democrats have to keep our, our eye on the prize. To impeach without removal, removal uh, is, is, I think, a mistake. The inquiry is not the same as the filing the, the uh, you know, uh, articles of impeachment. That's not impeachment. That is to determine it's the first step. At this juncture, Sophia, oh, I see Jason shaking his head. Go ahead, Jason. Yeah, it, it, this, and is then so, this, this is so ridiculous. This is why I, I was very happy to see that Senator Harris and, and Senator Warren this week came out and said, you know what, once I become president, as they were speaking confidently, I'm going to send a memo to the DOJ and I'm going to get rid of it because mm. a lot of this comes from the fact that, that Mueller was like, hey, I can't do anything. I can't indict a sitting president. That's sort of the core of this. So all the dancing around that the Democrats are doing now is also because of an interpretation that the Department of Justice that needs to be clarified or changed. If we have a president that can't be indicted, you're going to get that kind of word salad from Mueller. And that's where this problem comes from. Ari, let me say this. Of, of all the Republicans that are ducking and hiding, I've only heard Justin Amash and recently uh, former Defense Secretary right. and Congressman Bill Cohen, who was on the Nixon impeachment uh, you know, Judiciary Committee in the House as a Republican. And he said something I want to leave people with today, which is, Congress, do your job. This isn't about whether or not you're going to get reelected. It's not about whether or not you're coming back. You took an oath to the Constitution. The, what Mueller laid out in 400 and some pages of his report, I read it all, as I suspect all you did, were serious high crimes and misdemeanors. I'm over my neighbors and everybody else trying to skirt around this and say how this president's being picked on. He's not. And at the end of the day, the Congress has to do its duty and they must start an inquiry now because it's but time. It's just time for them to do it. Yeah, I, I think we have a conflict, though, between doing the right thing and the politics. So if Speaker Pelosi's right. end game is to get Donald Trump out of office, impeachment might actually interfere with that end game because of the politics. And so then yeah, where does she go with no, Who no. cares? It's, it's the it's right not. thing it's, to do. You honor well, your you, oath. You, you might care if you don't want Donald Trump to be president and the, and, uh, if so you don't want him, him to get reelected. But no one can predict what impeachment is going to do in 18 months. That doesn't yeah, make any crazy. sense. that's crazy. I'm with you, Jason. I mean, it just makes no sense to me to keep making this argument that we let him get away with it because we fear losing elections. That's not America. That's not what this republic is founded on. That's not okay. I, I, hear you, I hear you loud and clear, but you got to give Speaker Pelosi credit. She's not the most powerful woman in the United States for no reason. She's a master politician. She knows her strategy. This is about the Constitution, not about politics. I don't think this is a strategy. Sophia, Sophia, and, then, this is a strategy. Sophia and then Jason. No, I'm just saying this is bigger than politics, and that's where patriots come from, and that's what a profiles encourages. It's when men and women like Margaret Chase Smith and others stand up and they say, this is wrong, McCarthy, we're not doing this. I don't care if you pack, send me home packing and I never get reelected again. At some point, we have to make a decision what we value more, the republic and the values of the republic, or do we let this president continue to embarrass us, trample on us? You know, Bill Barr talked about um, er eroding the institutions. No president president has done more damage in two years than all of them combined for 240 years than this one has. That's my opinion, but that's how I see it. I wouldn't necessarily go that far at this point, but I will say this. It doesn't have to be an either or. Look, the, the problem that I've had with, with Speaker Pelosi is she was, throwing, she was throwing water on this before we even got the report out. Like, like that was the problem. She has basically mm. been discouraging and, and sending out a chilling effect to the entire house saying, no, 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 don't take this decision, don't take this position. I don't believe she's playing three-dimensional chess. I don't believe she's playing a long game. I think she is simply afraid and doesn't think she has the votes. And the problem is, just like you have to convince the American public that impeachment is a good idea, you have to convince your own members. And she's not well, letting that, them do that by saying she doesn't want to go for and, it. And it's fascinating listening to each of you uh, make such interesting arguments across the board. And, and that also, the point you end on, Jason, is the bar point, 
which is do you treat this as something that's just happening right. and watch it happen, or what he did, right? Unlike, say, your criticism of Pelosi, he came in very clearly with a view and he advocated it and he articulated it and he may have moved people on it. And we are at the highest stakes of inner branch legal, political, constitutional clashes. And who is fighting with a clear message and who is not, I think, is a part of this as we, as we really end what was Mueller Bar Week here. Hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here, or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that.